Welcome back to another issue. I'm Beastie Boy. I'm Table. I'm Red. And it is I, Shino Brando. Thank you for joining us on our DCPU rewatch. This is part four of the series. If you'd like to join us at the beginning of the series, click the top right of your screen to find the playlist. Oh, and while you're at it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be notified when we upload new videos. And now back to our show. And for today, we discuss a boy worthy of godlike power and a unique flock of angry birds in what will now be our cinematic conclusion. So we're going to start this adventure with a little boy named Billy Batson. Just kidding, it's Shazam! <laughs> no! This movie was released on April 5th, 2019. Its screenplay was written by Henry Gaiden. It was directed by David F. Sandberg. It had a budget of $90 million. And at the box office, it made $366 million. It features Asher Angel as Billy Batson, Zachary Levi as the titular character, Jack Grazer as Freddie Freeman, Mark Strong as Dr. Thaddeus Savanya, and Jaman Hasu as the wizard Shazam. Where do we start with this uh, family-friendly adventure? It is very family-friendly. The movie is very on rails, right? In the fact that it's a family movie and you can, you can just tell it from beginning to end how it's going to flow. In that case, though, I mean, it, it was geared to be a family-friendly movie. It was supposed to be a family uh, family experience anyway, so, I mean, it did its job. Right? That, we can say, um, it accomplished for sure. Hey, it did its job for that. When it comes down to the look of the movie, though, it's, I don't know, it's kind of it's kind of flat, kind of boring. Instead of going, like, like, dark and gritty, like, you know, most DC movies have thus far. Yeah. Or actually committing to the bright and cheery aesthetic. Yeah. They kind of just sat in the middle and came across as meh you're right it's the fact that we took we took place in philadelphia during the winter time there's, there's lack of anything i mean i guess i don't know if you're using it to to emphasize the color of you know of, of the whole gang right like later on because i mean the whole gang's it's a it's a whole you know whole rainbow of, of colors here right so they kind of stand out near the end kind of because they're they're kind of drowned out by being at the fair the carnival whatever Mm -hmm. right? So they're being, they're still kind of mushed with the, the, all the backlighting and whatnot, but you know, the whole movie is just very, it's a very plain city to look at. No offense to Philadelphia, but there's nothing really going on in the background of it. I mean, unless the Fresh Prince is there, but hey. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. It, it's very, it's an odd imagery to use. Odd time period to use to like winter time, especially for like Shazam. I don't know. I don't know. For me, it, it kind of lacked in the bright aesthetic. He's supposed to be a bright character, and the whole well, his the chest whole was sure bright. Just, that's for sure. Yeah, sure it was, but like the whole thing just looked yeah. kind of like dim. You know, just very plain. It could have created a good contrast effect. You know, yeah, like him being incredibly bright and singular against an otherwise sort of drab background could have looked good. Yeah. It just didn't. It just came off very boring and especially like a whole middle stretch of film them doing stuff <laughs> as shazam right like after the initial like trying to figure out what your, what your powers are just him literally walking around zapping phones and taking pictures i mean yeah i guess his point the point was to show like he's not really being a hero but i mean that went on for like a little too long oh definitely our right? main protagonist of uh, billy batson in this now super shocky form in the captain sparkle fingers form Zapped is in america yeah, zapped in America. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so our protagonist doesn't meet our antagonist until an hour and 15 minutes into this movie. Way too <laughs> fucking long. Way too long. <laughs> That's an entire movie length, essentially. It's you watch a movie before you get to the movie. <laughs> and that's before they, like, fight fight. That's just when they first interact. It's probably another 20 Ooh. or so minutes before they actually start fighting because Zachary Levi has to fucking chew up the scenery, allegedly. You forget Mark Strong's in this film until they really only need to use him for like, oh, look, he's evil now. He killed his dad. Ooh, look, he's evil now. He's chasing after children. I mean, the child actors did a good job. I yes. have few complaints about any of them. No, they were great. Yeah. They're all, they're all great. Some um, of them have the unfortunate side effect of the character we're playing, but I think we'll... Uh, I think we'll that's not their fault. That's not their fault yeah. at all. The person who plays Mary Marble, whose name I did not write down. The person who plays Darla. The person who plays Darla's other form. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the person who plays Freddie Freeman. Like, yeah, those characters chew up the world around them. Like, they, it feels yeah, lived in. It does. It feels like they really, really sat down with their, with their kid counterparts and kind of got to, like, got to, like, know them a little bit to see how they how they would react if they were in their bodies, right? They came off really, they came off fun. They were fun. 
I mean, as cheesy as it was, right? Because you're still gearing it, you know, everybody had to quip. Everybody yeah, had this was liner. definitely a PG-13 so movie. Say, right. But I mean, they, it did it did its thing. And like, if you're a kid, it's enjoyable to watch, right? Like, as an adult, you're like, okay. But, right? <laughs> I would say going into this movie, prepare for a family-friendly adventure. And knowing that going in, yeah, this movie accomplishes everything it sets out to be. Yeah, it sets yeah. a box around itself and then fills the box and mm -hmm. goes, I'm done. <laughs> it doesn't overextend Isn't itself it like some of our previous movies. It doesn't yeah. shortchange itself like another one of our previous movies. It kind of goes, "This is me." <laughs> this is it. Here, right? Enjoy. You know, we don't. We're not. We're not trying to fill those big shoes like the other films were. We're just going to be our thing. And if you like it, you like it. And if you don't, well, we did our job anyways, right? What I was going to say, like, I don't know. It's just okay. Beginning at the beginning of it and the ending of it is fine. Everything else in between is just, you just kind of want it to speed through really fast. This movie would work if it was like an hour and 45, to be honest. For sure. 30 minutes can come out of all of those Zachary Levi scenes where he's just mm -hmm. playing Captain Sparklefingers. I was more invested in watching Asher as Billy locate his mom. For sure. Because that was, more, that was a more interesting part of the whole story, right? Mm, yeah. And, yeah. And if you had focused on that a little bit more than just everything else in between Zach Levi, it, it would have probably moved a little bit better. Just like, a lot of that in between stuff could have just been cut. That movie could have been a whole, a whole lot more wholehearted. This message with family and and abandonment, and it had been much more, much more clutch. If you had put out a lot of that in between scenes, it worked a lot better. Yeah, I also am not super a fan of how they played Billy Batson in this one. Mm. Like, given what they decided to write for the dude, all actors did whatever. But Billy's supposed to be a pretty cheery kind of character. He's supposed he to generally be a relatively upbeat dude, even when he's literally homeless. Yeah, and like, here he's kind of a dick. Here he's just a dick a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but he like, eases up to friend? it. Yeah, okay, whatever. They yeah, do it, it takes... so that he has like a character arc. But mm. there are other character arcs from dick to feeling bad about being a dick, you know? Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From being, from being dick to Jason Todd is yeah. I get oh, you know, it. you know what? In this one, he did a lot better than than fucking Aquaman, right? Like, I I didn't help this guy save his dad. He's mad at me. I should have done it. it was a that dick. was a real bad arc. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> whereas here, going into detail about oh, like Billy lost his mom, but basically, like she gave him up the system the hard way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Which a... was just fucking icky dude yeah abandonment right I, it's, well, it, it's a it's a real issue though it, it has happened mm -hmm. uh, and i'm not right? saying it hasn't what i'm yeah. more saying is that like oh and to see like there's no redemption for her not that oh, i don't think not. there should be but oh. as an observation like billy's mom doesn't win anything she leaves a teenage pregnancy and then ends up with a guy that it's heavily implied that yeah that's not a very healthy relationship anymore mm -mm. and it's not even the the original dad for billy too right because yeah. the dad was in florida for prison yeah he fucking skedaddled yeah it, it, it proved the point that mommy batson made poor life choices basically <sighs> sadly that's that's yeah. what the message was she's not very responsible yeah. maybe she needed a little bit of redemption like maybe after meeting billy and maybe that's something for a sequel when eventually well, that decides to come out yeah. is that maybe yeah. billy's mom just ends up like just an independent woman and, and you know the thing is the for that little moment when they're talking obviously like that he mentions i just want to let you know like he's like okay my real family's back with a foster home that i've now gotten accustomed to yeah i'm just letting you know i gotten better he gives the little what is it that little map trinket right compass. the compass the compass right and then he like i like what you're saying about the chance of like a possible sequel for her to come back i feel like in some sort of sense hopefully that redemption comes in through that little thing that compass and then, you know, it's just like, okay, maybe you'll find your way because you might need it more. And I was like, please. At the same time, this movie was already long enough and we did not need mm -hmm. to add another subplot. You feel? <laughs> right? Like that that subplot alone should have been just the subplot itself. And everything else should have been just out of in between. Because like, you know, we started with Billy looking for his mom. That should have been the underlying subplot throughout the entire thing. Other than I'm now a big dude. I'm walking, I'm walking into a nude bar. I'm trying to buy beer. 
Yeah. You know, like a lot of this stuff could have been just. I didn't out mind the scene in the convenience it. store where he stops the criminals and. Yeah. But however, <laughs> uh, looking around and the attempt to chew up that scenery with, oh yeah, just shoot him in the face. No. Yes, exactly. Right. The yeah, psych that, of like slow motion, to... though, that that was pretty good. That got me. Like you guys mentioned, the certain scenes could have been like obviously taken down. Don't get me wrong; some scenes are comedic as uh, as all hell, but like there's a lot of it's just unnecessary. And you, and it's like it's I hate to use the word pandering, but it's almost like you're you're you know you're doing it for the you know young audience to get the haha as out of them, right? These are simple kid jokes that these are the know, jokes, sure kids. Like follow along. Yeah, we we all we've all grown past that now, right? Like our humors have grown with us. So I mean, like this stuff is you know it's very cheese ball, and but kids, like you know they chew it up. That's the way it works. This movie could have had way more fart jokes and i am so <laughs> glad it did not you are right it did go the mature route and did not go that way right at least there was something to tangible of a plot to grab onto as opposed to say like a trolls movie you know what i'll give it one scene though that's that's pretty humorous to me savannah and and shazam are in the sky right mm. and like they're, they're like meters apart and Savannah's just dropping down a monologue, and, she, and Shazam's like, "What are you, are you talking? Are you saying something? I can't hear you. We're yeah. so far apart, right?" And it's like because in other movies, when that shit happens, for some reason they're able to hear each other, which makes no sense by distance, right? So here it is. They don't. They they drop that kind of little realism in there, and it's kind of a it's a very funny scene, and even that scene goes on a little too long. But it was fucking good know. though. I'm like, whoa, really? You're gonna? This is the jab you take? Okay. Okay, let's go. Like it, it was, it was being fun out of the whole comic book trope of like, like you said, like yeah. Usually people can hear something, but it's like, hey, whoa, I'm actually a lot farther. I don't have super hearing, my guy. Like I don't know what you're saying. It doesn't work. Yeah, it's but it's good that they like you know put some meta jokes in there, so yeah. that, like they're aware of like you know the situation. I was like, ah, okay. So that way the people like us will go, oh hey yeah, it's that thing. Whereas a kid will go, <laughs> huh, and yeah. then find it funny yeah. when they actually start punching each other, and then it's cool. You have you have this well you can't call them marvel you have the shazam family now right yeah and we're reduced to fighting cg demons which is not as fun kind of yeah. lame to be honest with you but what else are you gonna do and but what else like, are you gonna do so and, they were in a cast like yeah. that like, you gotta there's you need little small problem children to fight yeah i, I suppose i mean it'd have been a lot i don't know I guess Walmart. you can't have that large of a cast, but the, you know the sin should have had, I guess, different bodies to embody itself to give them something physical to fight. Except, yeah, give the kids like things, people to punch. Stupid. Yeah, a CGI just, monster. Kind of like I for sure thought when Thaddeus walks into his dad's office and goes into there, yeah. I was like, oh, I thought they were gonna possess in these bodies. I'm like, oh, you represent greed. I'm like, okay, so is greed yeah. gonna inhabit him? No, mm -hmm. I'm thinking way too smart for this fucking movie. No, we also yeah. can't pull a full metal alchemist. Yeah. You guys are forgetting. <laughs> we can't someone have like greed and then just you know walk out with like a, a polar coat and like glasses. Like no, we can't no, do this. I, I would accept that because they've been possessed by something. At least it gives the it gives the gangs something physical to actually fight. And at the end, the, you know the sins get demolished and these people get their bodies back. No harm, no foul, right? I guess. But, yeah, like, we're fighting thing with tongue and thing with wings and this thing with horns and it's just things with fangs but know. they yeah, sure it's, look it's, good it's boring they do but it's boring listen man they look better than steppenwolf and doomsday i'll give you that ha, absolutely you Thank you. no fun not a high that. bar not a high bar at all nope. not a high bar but they certainly passed it oh and this also includes enchantress and her brother that squad and El Diablo. Generous, but okay, we're moving yeah. on. <laughs> it, hey, it looks okay. If you want to find out about more great. of our opinions about part two, click the link at the top right. We can just agree that everything from that movie was hot topic or forgettable. This movie, yeah. on the other hand, <laughs> is every color of the fucking rainbow. But like, yeah. not in a fun way somehow. But yeah, it just, it very just, how do you have the color wheel and still have, and still have it look flat? I think That's it right. might be the light up chests, honestly. Yeah. Like the light up chests are super cool. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But what it means is that is the brightest thing on screen, and yeah. everything else just kind of fades a little bit. It like just, up it, that saturation, bro. Honestly, that final battle at the fair, that, that that you know, it just they get they kind of just get drowned out by all the lights around them, mm. and it's like it's a shame because they're so you know they got purple, they got green, red blue gray can they, they they should pop but they don't really pop too much oh the super unfortunate part is all those characters at the end when all the kids say the titular character of this movie yeah when they say his name 
they can't call them by their comic book names anymore. Yes, yeah, so you were telling me, like, I, I, because I didn't hear them go by any names in the film, and you said something about their names being listed in the. So in the, in the credits, in the scene when they first show up, from mm. left to right is superhero Freddy, superhero Darla, superhero Mary, superhero Eugene, and superhero Pedro. Awful. Yeah, man. Wait, why? So why couldn't they use the because I guess, comic ones? Because Marvel the actual action. name of that character is mm. Captain Marvel. That's his real name. Yeah. The fact that it has to be called Shazam in this movie hurts my heart. Because Marvel made a grape and they wanted the Captain Marvel title because Captain Marvel, Marvel Comics, blah, blah, blah. And they kind of they won that shit out. No, but for, sorry, for the kids, like, in a sense, what would be, what was the ultimate so names? So, I got you, not to worry. So, for yeah. Freddy, that would be mm-hmm. Captain Marvel Jr., who, fun that story, nice. that's the influence for Elvis Presley's cape. And haircut. And haircut, and full fucking aesthetic. For Darla, I don't believe she has a comic book counterpart. No. But superhero Mary is Mary Marvel. Oh, now, yes, okay, okay. So... Mary Marvel is a very unfortunate case because Mm -hmm. the actress who plays her, when that character is saying to go off to college, you could take that one of two ways. You could take that as the actual character leaving off to college and that's the excuse we get. Or you Mm -hmm. could take it as the like cinematic trope of, oh, this character is leaving. And if you decide to take it that way, it's extra sad because the person who Mary Marvel is based on Miss Mary Binder, daughter of mm-hmm. Otto Binder, the creator of Captain Marvel slash Shazam. Mm-hmm. She died in an unfortunate car accident when the car hopped the curb and killed her on the way to school. Oh, that's... Whoa! Wait yeah. a second. Whoa! Is that yeah. is that the reference in the movie? It You or... could take it that way. Oh, shit. Yeah, so Mary Marvel has some unfortunate baggage with her. But the fact mm. that she has an on-screen interpretation mm. and she gets to kick the crap out of other people but doesn't get to maintain her name is a little sweet and sour. Yeah, it is. And you know, and, and it hurts because of that whole fight that they had Marvel trying to, you know, grab that name. So now we lose we lose out on 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 the cool family name of Uncle Marvel and Marvel Jr. and Mary Marvel and all that stuff. Now that like in in even in comic lore, what do they like what do they go by now? They Go by the Shazam family, and then it's super complex. The Shazam family, yeah, but like, so like, the Mary, Mary Marvel just, character. Yeah, it's just Mary. Yeah, right now it's just Mary, but she hasn't shown up very recently. And the last time she showed up, they could still say Mary Marvel. So because it's super complicated, you don't get to name that yeah. character anymore. Since not only did Marvel plant their flag first in a cinematic universe using the name Captain Marvel, hmm. they also own the rights to it. This is unfortunate now, so, like, we lose on a character for a time being until we can find, like, a, I guess a good moniker for her. I mean, calling her, like, Shazam Mary or Mary Shazam doesn't sound right. Shazam Jr. sounds stupid as shit. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, yeah, but it always sounded stupid as shit. Yeah. <laughs> Billy Batson's dad being named C.C. Batson is a reference to his creator, C.C. Beck, legendary comic book artist, also the co-creator of Supergirl. The name of his school is... Fawcett, whatever, Fawcett High or something like that. Hmm. And that's because the comic publisher that used to publish... So, when Shazam started, he started off as a, in a comic called Wiz Comics. And it was named yeah. after Captain Wizbang's Funnies. And so they shrunk it down because they couldn't license the name. Because that, uh, that copyright was already taken at the time. And so Wiz Comics number two is where Captain Marvel shows up under that moniker. And Fawcett Comics were the people to publish it. And so it's a little nod backwards. Captain Marvel's history is just a fucking mess of legal stuff, huh? Yeah. <laughs> For sure it is. 100%. From the day of Inception, I think, right? They, they lost it with Superman and then right up until, like, the, the name from Marvel. is it, just... So... He had a long... He's had a rough run. Yeah, he very much so. The too long didn't read version is when Wiz Comics came out, it was fine. Except for it started selling better than Superman because that was the idea. <laughs> Then DC bought them or, well, borrowed the character because why, you know, why have competition when you can just buy them out? Well, from what I remember, they gave them lawsuits enough to, like, drown, like, just, like, give them a hard time. So, like, Fawcett kind of just, they just kind of ran out of money. Folded in. They they folded in and then DC just scooped it up. 
And then when you have both Superman and Captain Marvel showing up, now Marvel has direct competition. Mm -hmm. And so here come the lawsuit boys going, well, actually, you can't call him Captain Marvel because now we're Marvel Comics instead of what we used to be called was Timely Comics. And since we own the the rights to the word Marvel, here we are. So then they changed the name of the comic and that didn't suffice because it also featured the name, but there was more words on the end of it. And now DC goes, okay, so the character's name is Shazam. If you wanted to talk about him without him saying his name, which is the problem we run into, you're, oh, the okay. name you can call him is Captain Marvel. You can refer to him, but that's not the character name. So say in Young Justice, when they refer to him as Captain Marvel, that's allowed. But you cannot print on a comic book or anything else that this is Captain Marvel. That's the little loophole they found. It's so fucking stupid. It's so sure. dumb. But the ties to other characters such as Black Adam are not lost in this movie. Which is fucking cool. Kind of alluded to and, you know, we, we got to wait for that to come out to see how where that that deep connection you know, is. Yeah, like, other than that, like, what else can we say about this film? I mean, it does its job as a family film. It's on rails. So beginning to end, you know where it's going. You guys make of it. I think it's a nice time. It's a, it's a good time. Like, it's yeah. enjoyable to watch nonetheless, even though, again, like, some parts are, like, a little bit excited. It's still... I watched this again, and I was like, I enjoyed it. I was like, okay to go through it again. I um, I mean, I didn't mind it. It's, again, it's a family-friendly movie. It does its thing. I watched it for the sake of watching it, right? I just, I kind of just wanted the minutes to run so I could just get to the end, right? If I were, if I were a father, right, and I had a, I took a child to see this a film, I would, I would sit there and be like, yeah, this is, this movie did its job. It's great. It's good. Yeah. It does its and I, I was that, watching it again for, as well as Beastie, and I was much less jazzed to be rewatching it. Not because it's not good, but I was just like, I have already seen this, right. and there's right. there isn't really anything additional on a second watch. Right. It just happens. I think we're at a rating. Yeah, what do you guys want to give? What do we think, boys? Actors are fine. They do their parts. No one's no one's terrible. I keep saying the movie is just straightforward. It's you're, you get on that track and you're going from point A to point Z, no problem. I don't know. It, effectively, yeah, I would give it a I, seven. I, I was going to say the same thing. I, I I fall on a seven for this movie. Like it's perfectly good. Perfectly Whatever. Watchable. Go watch it. I've I don't got, care. There's not a lot of complaints. The only big thing I've got is the fact that Darla is in this movie. That girl needs to be fucking protected. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, and man. when she takes on the superhero Darla form, <laughs> holy yeah. shit, dude, I've never simped so hard in my fucking life. Yeah. <laughs> or from you is saying something. I'm full 100%. You all content in. with a 7? I'm all in on a fucking 7. Yeah, I'm good for a 7 too. 7, yeah, 7 seems right. Like, you guys want to have a good family time, go watch the movie. So, <laughs> I'm going to stick right here at the end before we jump to the next film. If you wanted to watch <laughs> every movie we've we've talked about thus far... If you go to Walmart's website or the Amazon website, you can find a collection of all these movies on DVD, and I think it's only 25 bucks. At 25 really bucks not. for all of those movies, that's enough value. It's a steal. Yeah, that is actually a pretty good steal. Really good steal. That's like five bucks a disc, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. at five bucks, I will sit through every movie we've we've been through thus far. That's no problem. The unfortunate part is... I source these movies in as legitimate a way as possible. So generous of you. Because legality. <laughs> that brings us to oh. the controversial one. Birds of Prey. Give us the whole title, please. So. Oh, God. <laughs> Birds of Prey and the Emancipation of One Fantabulous Harley Quinn. <laughs> so yeah. let's start at the beginning here. So hmm. Birds of Prey, as it's now listed was released February 7th, 2020. This is the last DC movie to be released pre-Nerd Crusade. Also pre-Backstreet Boys. Pre-Backstreet Boys. <laughs> this this movie was directed by Kathy Yan. It was written by Christina Hudson. It cost $90 million to make, and it made a box office of $201.9 million. It stars Margot Robbie, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Journey Smollier, Ali Wong, and Ian McGregor. This movie technically made money, but definitely not enough to warrant any sort of sequel on usual standards. Usual Mm -hmm. standards is you take the the cost, you double it, because that's about as much as advertising costs. And then you need more than, yeah, you need more than double. 
So technically made money. It made a lot of its money overseas. It didn't make a lot of money here in North America. The name change. This movie started off as Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. Apologies, I put the Fantabulous in the wrong place. It's okay. It's okay. The title's ridiculous anyways. Then for (laughs) unknown fucking reasons, WB decided to relabel this movie as Harley Quinn, colon, Birds of Prey. Because that former title is fucking ridiculous. Well, also because it's probably more accurate to call it a Harley Quinn movie than to call it a Birds of Prey movie. The Birds of Prey kind of happened, sort of. And that's my beef with this whole film. This film is, this film just should have been straight up a Birds of Prey film. And like, it's disappointing that it's not. It feels like two films in one where we're focusing way too much on Harley Quinn. And we're trying to set up Birds of Prey, but we're not giving the Birds of Prey any fucking time. No, 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 you're wrong, you're wrong. We're trying to focus on Harley Quinn, but we're focusing on the kid. Cassandra oh, Cain, that they call her. Okay, I just need to make it clear before I go off here cool. that I really like this movie. I really like this movie. I also However, really like this movie. What they did with the character they named Cassandra Cain uh-huh. is outright a crime. So <laughs> for viewers who are not familiar, Cassandra Cain, in comic continuity the second Batgirl. She later takes on the name Black Bat, and then when she gets kicked in the teeth by the reboot, she ends up going by the name Orphan, which is to date what she is currently going by. You can find lots of this information in our Batgirl episode, link on screen. (laughs) Which is way derogatory because almost the whole gang are a bunch of orphans, but whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the important things to know about Cass as a character. Cass's background is that she was raised to be a weapon by her absolutely horrible father she is the daughter of lady shiva and this guy because the goal was to make a perfect assassin kind of thing she was raised without speech so that she would read body language which would be an advantage in a fight and she had to later forcibly teach herself how to not just read and write but how to speak to people there was a whole plot line around that and we're not going into it but cassandra Payne is debatably the best physical fighter in the entire DC comic universe. So to take a character with this rich and interesting and complex background and to par her down to bitch-ass pickpocket street kid who's through the system (laughs) was insulting. And then to slap her name on it for branding reasons was insulting. Well, dude, but that's the whole that's the whole gang, and that's my that's my thing with this movie. Black Canary is not very much like Black Canary in this film. Huntress is not very much Huntress in this film. Renee Montoya is not very much Renee Montoya in this film. Like though, like every character they use was incorrect, and that's what's upsetting about the whole film. It's like they got they got reduced to to nobodies, and Renee got re- like it, it. Renee got reduced to like a joke cop, right? Being insulted, being kicked out of the force, wearing that dumbass t shirt. Pretty much getting beat up every scene she's in. Being like, an 80s like, movie she, fucking was, quote machine. Yeah, it was just, it was like, it, every character was just used so poorly. That, like, I can't enjoy this film for that very reason. Like, and I hate when films take these characters and, and especially, like, don't make them look like how they, sh- like, how they could look. You just reduced hundreds to biker chick with leather. You know, Black Canary was just a girl who works in club wearing blue and yellow. Like, it, no one had any appeal on screen. They had no look. No visual distinction, no nothing. They just look boring. Harley Quinn had all the colors. Hard, di- hard disagree on everyone looking boring. Um, they were explained how they were. They were super boring. In that Huntress was just a girl on bike. I, like I, looking at her, I could. I that's Mila Jovovich in Resident Evil. She looked no different. I I disagree though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like okay, yeah, sure. Her initial outfit of just protective leather because she's in Gotham on a motorcycle and it rains and also motorcycle accidents are really prevalent. Fair enough. And she looks really and then, good but on then a motorcycle. Later, she's got, she really does look good on that motorcycle. But then she's got the interesting crop top thing going on. She's got like all those weird, like almost harnessy bits. And here's the thing. Okay. I get, I, I agree with you that whatever's going on with Black Canary is not typical. But it definitely felt like there's some sort of entirely complicated backstory relating to her mom that we never got to see. Yeah, they don't just get to drop that in the middle of fucking nowhere. (laughs) Yeah, I was like, okay, so there's something happened here and you're not going to tell us what. That's a little bit annoying. But at least I know that there is some sort of like 
catalytic change in her background that's pushed her to where she is. And then Huntress, yeah, okay, you're right that she's a little bit unusual, but let's be real. Comics Huntress is a sex object most of the time. This Huntress isn't, and also gets to actually be affected by her trauma in that she has zero social skills because she spent her entire childhood learning how to murder people in Italy. My answer to that is body armor. Bikers wear body armor, and it doesn't have to look skimpy. It can look badass, and she can still come off looking like Huntress. Here, she looked boring. It's boring. There's no excuse for that. Even Deadshot had the most basic body armor on him to make him look a, a little like Deadshot. Here, we gave her nothing, and it's, like, too bad. The ladies look great on screen. Don't get me wrong. But their costume designs are just very boring. They don't look I'm- like who they, who they could be. I'm going to tell you, the costume design, for the most part, very gay, and I stand by it. <laughs> that's, and that's totally fine, but, like, they still don't come off like who they could look what they could look like. I mean, I'm not asking you to put, like, Black Canary in fucking fishnet and whatever, but, like, you can give me something that looks like, like her body. Like, she has a different suit. She has the bodysuit version, where she, it looks like a costume. You know, hunches, you could give hunches, like, like Nightwing-inspired body armor to, like, come off like a biker. It, like, it would look better. I, like even even the bride and kill bill looked through like this visual distinction on a bike she looked cool and that's a suit so here she looks like it, it's no excuse like, that's boring stuff man they could have done a lot better but they didn't they didn't do anything with them left them kind of flat and that sucks because these ladies should look pretty like they should look like fly on screen but they they just didn't i agree to an extent i believe that throughout most of the movie they look fine they look lived in that these characters like that is what somebody would put on but the big asterisk on that one is right at the end where we have the sort of denouement that they've now created a team and that they're going to rule the underworld of gotham that costume ridiculous yeah i kind of like the weird little goggle things though because it was reminiscent of a domino mask without like doubling down being a domino mask Mm -hmm. yeah exactly i was like oh that's neat because also, for, you know, the reasons of sexy ladies, Huntress has always not worn a proper domino. She's always just kind of had, like, the weird pseudo mask that's also yeah. on a number of back rolls, you know, because, you know, it's important that you can see their big, pretty eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that Diana Lance sings. Think- yeah, I like that that's a yeah. character thing that she does. Yeah. And that... Did you say Diana Lance? Diana Lance. Diana Lance. Okay. My apologies. Understandable. <laughs> My apologies. Dinah Lance, I appreciate that she sings a lot. Hmm. Now, the person she sings for or is employed by, that dude, hmm. one of you can stand in my way when I say Black Mask is gay. Oh, oh he definitely is. Excuse, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. What? what there was, an, it was another message there? What? Allegedly, <laughs> those are two heterosexual men that live together. <laughs> No, no, no. That's, Yo, that's the that's the biggest load of bullshit I've ever been served in my fucking life. Yo, those care. those two had the biggest Brokeback Mountain energy you in know, life. Jimmy, the very moment he employed Black Canary and he was giving her the rundown of all the statues and and fucking Zaz is interrupting. That's that's all jealousy. What do you mean? I know. Allegedly, no. That no. man is gay, 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 gay. Thirty mean? seconds into this fucking movie, we get like actual representation that harley quinn not only dated women but also got her heart broken this movie has has gay energy from start to finish without skipping a beat speaking of the character for victor stas speaking for victor stas let alone like the brookback mountain energy that they were giving off highly this man sounded like the huntsman from looney tunes (laughs) if if, because that's what caught me off guard too because i was like why does he i was like victor stas doesn't sound like this like elmer Yes, like yeah, yeah, he doesn't sound like uh, like Elmer Fudd or like at least like flamboyant ish. Like I get the voice tone they were going for, but I was like, it's not like that. And let I was me like, just oh. see. If, let me just see if I've got this right. You're telling me it's what? bird season? <laughs> it, it's Stop. rabbit season. <laughs> Duck season. <laughs> rabbit <This> season. Movie <laughs> it's web. Was season. an exercise <laughs> in WLW and MLM hostility. You know, <laughs> this was a battle of the gays. Also, it did a great job of making me really want to watch Black Mask get his ass kicked and really want to watch Zaz get murdered. Listen, yeah, they were they were they were complete dicks, right? Like <laughs> they were assholes, man. Um, that that oh, whole scene, 
in the, in the club where he forced that girl to, to get on the table and and, oh, and, and tear I, off her dress and whatever and whatnot. Horrified. Dude, oh man, that was super uncomfortable. Like I had like, to skip like, it. No, fuck okay. it. Like, man. If oh. in the end, I'm like, if he if he doesn't somehow get murdered and he only gets caught somehow, I'm gonna get pissed off because like that that shit. Black Mask is not above burning down all of Gotham to kill one man. He will do it. It's not Black a problem Mask for him. Killed a Robin. Right, like he will go. Like, oh. So, like, yeah, man, like that whole like that scenario is very real of Black Mask, and that shit was just uncomfortable. I and mean, then I can't wait for this guy to die because shit. So, as we're talking about yeah, characters that love each other, tell me why Harley and her fucking sandwich show more genuine interest in each other <laughs> than every character before this movie. Oh man, because it's because only made by Sal. Like she has more chemistry with that sandwich than she ever did with the Joker. And you know what that is? That's been facts. My my beef with chemistry is like because we had the girls so separated for so long, and it was just a ch- a cat and mouse chase, right? Like we didn't get mm. to have them really connect to each other. So like when they gang together at the end, they, it still feels very disjointed. This movie would have should have just these should have been just two movies. We should have just had a Harley Quinn movie, and we should have just got a fucking Birds of Prey movie because we deserve a Birds of Prey movie, and should have just happened. I get your complaints, I really do, but I also disagree when you say that these characters don't have chemistry with each other because what they do is fun and cheery and very firmly female relationships with other women. Like that's besides. I mean, like, look. So you have you have what. Rene Montoya running to Harley Quinn a few times, and then that's it. Then you have them being confronted by "quote unquote" crossbow killer, and then she drives off, and then she bumps into like it's 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 a lot of happenstance. They don't really they don't really hang out with each other, so you don't really get really a real connection with them. And then at the end, they're just they're just ganged together to, to take on Black Mask. So like again, their on screen chemistry feels disjointed because they never really hung out. So it's just it it literally is just every girl for themselves. It just doesn't feel like any real cohesiveness there. It just feels disjointed. The on-screen chemistry was more not on screen, sorry, but the chemistry that they got together more or less started developing more at the end of like when they were in the what is yeah, it, the fun act house? Three. Act three. Yeah, so act three in like I think if anything, Harley Quinn and Cassandra came have more of chemistry getting closer was, together than mostly was, everybody else. Yeah, yeah. and that, and that's and that's what's sad because Again, we should have had just a Birds of Prey movie because I feel like the characters here got the short end of the stick. Birds of Prey movie, and it's it, and that's that's uncool to me, man. It was just... definitely a Harley Quinn movie that happened to have the Birds of Prey characters. Yeah, exactly. and and it's it's unfortunate because they deserve their own film, and this wasn't it. And again, like they just again they look great on screen, but they're just they're just criminally underused, man. It's just no fun to see them. It sucks. It just sucks. Like, I had my, no connection to Huntress. Her whole backstory is given to me by, by Harley Quinn. My main gripe with that is Harley Quinn's voiceover through the entire movie. It is one thing if you are self-referential to yourself. If you interact with your own voiceover, I think I can get by that. You know? Mm-hmm. When the other characters finish the sentence that you started or interact with you back over the voiceover, that's the one I have a problem with. The yeah. weird animated scene at the beginning was really, like more fluid than it ever had to be hard and fast backstory it was like all right let's just uh set the scene real quick go mm-hmm. and, and then, then the other like weird sort of like the version of diamonds are a girl's best friend that was that... a bit weird but it means you can make the joke about if i had a nickel for every time that ewan mcgregor was in a film with a rendition of a diamonds are a girl's best friend i would have two nickels which isn't a lot but it's weird that it happens <laughs> the best part of this it's, soundtrack it's a... I believe, mm-hmm. is the slowed down version of Hit Me With Your Best Shot. Yeah. Disagree. Okay, I am going to pull up the entire soundtrack because I, lo- I listen to it ev- semi-regularly via Spotify because I really, really like this movie's soundtrack. Also, also, that final fight, for me, the final battle works. The problem with that final battle is left their vocals on top of the music and the music's drowned out. Yeah. So, like, like the music shouldn't even been used, or you should just emphasize on the song itself and have the action around that. That mm. one I agree. With. Whole, like, there's a lot of it. The, just the weird. sound mixing at the action. very end in Act Three is a little bit wonky. The, like I don't know, the yeah, film was just needed another. Oh, pass. It, the film's, yeah, the film's all over the place. It really is. When it comes down to 
action like it does its job like i'm not bored when i'm watching when i'm watching harley you know kicking ass so i'm not bored when i'm seeing them getting chased down i'm not bored when the girls are like you know doing their thing that all that all that's visually appealing i have to go a little bit against that just for like okay not all the fight scenes but the final act fight scene Mm -hmm. with the girls i feel like there wasn't fully the full potential wasn't there because like I, I, yeah i agree there's not there's not a lot a whole lot of choreography there it's because the like fight. like let alone them being like uh what do you call it? i would say street level like fighters i guess you could yeah. say sure yes they, it makes sense for what their abilities are just like obviously like fighting abilities are yeah. it makes sense for them to have like you know this kind of scene but i feel even so they could have had a little bit more better choreography put into it for me it's for me, it feels like Margot Robbie was the only one who got choreography because Harley Quinn and everybody else was just jumping around, swinging and shooting things. I thought like everyone else was brawling. Yeah, my counterpoint to that would be that Dinah Lance, Black Canary, gets an entire like fight segment to herself when we finally show off the Canary cry. So <laughs> for her not to be showcased throughout the entire fight scene makes some sense You like looking at the whole, that big fight as a whole. But yeah, right, just from that fight know, in the fun house, yeah, uh, yeah, significantly underused. What I know, Dinah Lance is a hardcore knuckle brawler, one of the best fighters recorded by Batman. To, he said it too. She's one of the best genius fighters out there. Mm-hmm. And her canary cry is usually used as a last resort. Right. Here in the fun house, we don't get, yeah, we it don't sure get was much, a last resort. Yeah, we don't get much of her fighting though, but like we do get her as a last resort. Then again, we get no explanation as to why she's able to do it. I know you're going to disagree with me on this, but I fucking loved the police station and I loved the evidence lockup fight. And no. I, I know you're going to go, Oh yeah, yeah. She would have been instantly murdered. I don't yeah, care, that's, but that's it was colorful and fun. <laughs> and I got to watch her kick the shit out of cops. That's the thing for the sake of the movie. Sure. It happened. There is no way in real life. Someone's walking through with any type of fucking weapon in their hand and not getting shot the fuck up. But yeah. here in this in reality, all the cops seem to forget they had guns and are, and they're actually trying to physically fight this woman. And also, Bizarre. she's not um, shooting bullets for the first little bit. She's shooting like <laughs> bean bags and yeah. like confetti yeah, cannons paintball. and just yeah. spray. It's fucking like, glorious. I don't in, care. In no real world would that ever work. But hey, for the sake of this movie, we'll let it. We will let it slide she because we are cops. fucking incompetent, and we know this. Yeah. Let alone that, just like as soon as the, like what like two to three cops see Harley Quinn. Yeah. You think someone's gonna be like, "Hey, hit the alarm, man!" Like, you're one of those homicidal maniacs that that hung up with the Joker. The the mo- the, the key idea is to sh- is shoot. I have to this day recorded. I don't know any cop who has never shot on sight. So that's why it's, it's, it's just really bizarre. Point but taken. Here, here in this movie, you're gonna fight with nightsticks and and I don't know, try to physically try to punch her, which is weird. But but cool. throughout right. the entire movie, these cops are shown to be like ultra incompetent. I suppose. Yeah, apparently Rene Montoya, fucking ace detective, is fucking dumb as shit, too. Ace detective. I mean, hey. Well, she's uh, quote-unquote quippy as shit. But Fuck, man. Uh-huh. To, to fully play on to, like, the, the fight scene that happens later in the lockup, when the water mm. starts coming, Beastie's gonna fucking lose his goddamn gourd when I say this. That fight felt very step up three. <laughs> 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 It was water movement, it was slow motion, it was how fast can we spin a character, how much cocaine can we do. Oh, man. And you know what hurts? He's not wrong, because that's who I I, am. Let alone that, just like, fuck, man. Like, that rain scene where, like, I think, oh, man. Just the outside rain scene. That's why it hurts, because it made me think of that low-key. I was like, they should be moving this, like, smoothly. I expected to hear. Real (laughs) self. But like, God. I'll tell you what, this movie has some key scenes that, that do translate very well. Right? A lot of it, again, a lot of it's still a bit disjointed and, and design-wise very weird, but there are some strong scenes that make up this movie. I will never take away from that because it, it does carry a fucking message. And it's true? very clear. It's very okay. clear. And I, and yeah, it's very clear. And I, you know, it's a very acceptable, it's very acceptable, man. There's just some choices that like, I'm like, you guys, I don't know, you guys, I don't know. If I could exemplify the message for a hot second, I believe the message yeah. in this movie is be gay, do crimes. For those that have been know. following along in our series, this is the movie I call it very competent and may come close to our, once we get to a rating, that could come close to, like, a very high on the scale. 
I, uh, I, I, I don't know about that. You're, you're gonna get a hard disagree on that because yeah, uh, this is gonna be a 50 50 situation. Uh, high on a scale, I I beg to differ hardcore. As well as it goes against the other movies, it's good. It acts well better than Suicide Squad. The word Squad. I would well, use for this movie eight. is competent. Yeah, it is. I want to give it an eight. I... I... no. I'm sorry. I know you will talk me out of this because, or no, you'll just disagree hard enough that I have to concede. But like I... in my head, this has an eight. Uh, so, so okay. I'm going to surprise you right now and just say that my my take was also going to be on an eight because again, the movie has a message, it has a plot, and it moves. There's scenes that translate really well. It's just that there's a few things that are flawed. And I'm not saying it's a terrible movie. Just there's some there's some choices that they should have just not gone with. Rating wise, much better than the other some of the other entries on in in the listing. And I, I was I was gonna give it an honest eight. I can't give it an eight. How deep in the chart are you gonna go? I'm not gonna go below five. I can say I can say that, but I'll give you it. You better like an fucking honest, not. Like, we have Men of Steel, anyways. I'll give it like a six. I can't I can't agree to that, man, because film wise, the movie's a film. It works. It's better than most of the films that we had that we've that we've conquered before, man. So I I don't know personally me just me, like I like the movie was good. I would say like it was good as it was. Hmm. But like you mentioned, there were some things where I like I was honestly looking at the screen and like I kinda got bored in some parts. And for me, those are minor gripes. Yeah, that's like that's like minor, but I that's the thing, like giving it a watch like if i was to do a rewatch honestly i would still just give it a six that's just me for me again character design and and set choices and such are just minor gripes for me to take it off like two two three points off of it like i the lowest i would ever go is 7.5 but it's it i could settle on 7.5 8 because the movie's a movie if i may maybe uh, with some context with our because this is the end of our series for now maybe just to give everybody a sort of refresher on where our scale is at that might be uh-huh. helpful so, okay. in order, we've got Man of Steel with a 6 out of 10, Batman v Superman mm-hmm. with a 3 out of 10, Suicide Squad mm-hmm. with a 2 out of 10, Wonder Woman at a perfect 10 out of 10, Justice right. League with an average of 6 out of 10, Aquaman mm-hmm. with a 4.5 out of 10, and just at the beginning of this episode, Shazam with a 7 out of 10. Oh, and for me, I enjoyed Birds of Prey over Shazam because Shazam's a very family-oriented movie and it, it, it kind of bored me in the middle. Birds of Prey, not the same thing. I'm giving it 8, man. 7.5 the lowest, but that's about it. I agree with that. I that's am that's also that's in that. favor of that. That's However, I mean, Birds of Prey, like, I like, I multiple views, maybe not for me, but like, I can tell you right now, once was enough, but like, I wasn't, I wasn't fucking bored with once and once was enough, right? The unfortunate like, part is, Table and I have watched this movie. We watched it in theaters mm-hmm. when it was safe to do so. So, and... that points it. Yeah, it's got Ewan McGregor. I love Ewan McGregor, and he played Black Mask. So, I'm happy with that. So, with that, with a rating done. And our series wrapped up for now. Do we have final thoughts on the universe as it stands currently? I'm real confused about where they're going. <laughs> just do better. If you're going to continue this stuff, man, just try to do a better job. And, and actually, you know, try to communicate with each other. The reason why MCU worked is because all these directors had a general outline and they had to work off of each other. That's mm-hmm. why continuity worked. These guys had no fucking continuity. Aquaman's doing this. Aquaman does that. Then this guy does this and this does that. But like all very like again, my favorite word is disjointed because next time, guys, just try to make it a bit more connected, man. It is one part in its favor, one part not, is that Shazam can exist without the other movies, and you can enjoy your family friendly adventure and go through it. Mm -hmm. However, when you have kids in that movie and allusions in this movie to movies that have already happened, maybe you should go talk to the creative minds behind those projects. Looking towards the future, we've got Wonder Woman 84, which as of this recording is scheduled for a December release date. I am firmly in the camp. That movie's getting pushed the hell back. Of course. But as of this recording, we've got the Snyder Cut coming next year sometime, Mm -hmm. allegedly. We've got the Suicide Squad with a Peacemaker show coming out of that one. We've got the GCPD show that's coming exclusively to HBO Max. We've got... Aquaman 2 in the pipeline somewhere. We've got Shazam 2, Fury Mm -hmm. of Monsters coming sometime. And that's our DC slate for some up for the DC things. You got got Flashpoint. And then Black Adam 2 being in the works. Yeah. Yeah. Black Adam. Which hopefully they connect well. Hopefully they connect the little scenery of like what it did with Shazam. Like hopefully to the origin well at least. I I guess that comes to the end of this one. End it, Beastie, if you please. 
Thank you for tuning in for this DCPU uh, saga marathon, as we call it. But this brings us to our socials, which is our Twitter at Crusade Nerd, our Instagram at Nerd Crusade. And we also upload every Wednesday to YouTube, and you can download any previous episodes or listen on your mobile device through the Anchor.fm website or wherever podcasts are found by searching Nerd Crusade. All right, and that's to be continued. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, go ahead and button mash a thumbs up. If you want to swing by when we have a new video, web up the sub button. Oh, and while you're at it, hit the bell to be notified by... Oh,